Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> this is uh, Ken Law from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading report for May 23rd, 2015, Memorial Day edition. Uh, the family and I just got back from the National World War I Memorial. Uh, we paid our respects to uh, my grandfather and father and my brothers, all veterans. And uh, it, was a, uh, it was good to spend some moments in quiet reflection on uh, what those guys mean to me. Uh, I'm not big on parades uh, on Memorial Day. I just assume, uh, remember quietly. I don't really think it's something to celebrate, uh, but that's just my, I guess, my Welsh background speaking. So uh, let's get on with the reports. Um, we just moved into bullish quiet conditions uh, on Friday, and that's very favorable for the long side and for swing trading going forward. Um, that's a good thing. On an annual basis, using weekly RSI 14, we're at the upper half of neutral at 61 out of 100. That's an improvement over last week. On the 10-day NDX, we remain overbought at 85 out of 100. Uh, looking at the market mosaic, uh, price with respect to the 200-day moving average is at 5.11% stretched uh, north of that moving average, which is white bullish. That gives us about a 3% cushion to sideways. Um, the slope of the 50-day moving average is white bullish at 0.38. That's a definite improvement over the last two weeks when it was red and then yellow. Uh, ADX is still a remarkably weak 9.5. Uh, that's actually a good thing uh, for swing trading because once the market gets uh, some directionality and movement, uh, it can go for a couple weeks because it's been chopping around now for almost 60 days. Um, the risk index is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10. The threshold between <coughs> risk on and risk off is 1.0. The current reading is 1.032. So we just move back into uh, risk on conditions. We were in risk off uh, last week. Take that score of 1.032, compare it to the last 5,000 trading days. We find the average and the standard deviation, and that lets us compute the risk Z, or the number of standard deviations above the long-term average that that reading represents. The current value of the Z score is 0 0.31, so a third of an SD uh, better than average. And you see here a 90-day time series of that indicator. Uh, we've had a triple bottom in here uh, uh, between 0 and minus 0 0.5. And we just tipped back up into the positive zone. Now, the last time that it tipped it went positive, in both of these cases, uh, there were some swing trades that were possible. And the third time ago, that this was a terrific swing trade opportunity. So I'm very um, optimistic here about the potential for a long side swing trade. You can see the current holdings in the blended monthly rebalancing with the next rebalancing due on or about 1 June. Um, these are the current holdings as of uh, May 23rd. Uh, so we'll be looking to reallocate or rebalance uh, at the end of next week. Um, it's just interesting to me to know XLV, the uh, healthcare is still uh, chunking quite a chug it along uh, pretty well uh, from the U.S. large caps. So that's a good thing. In ETF2, the theoretical exposure pulls back a little bit to 90% from 100%. The model portfolio stops are still in, and none of them were hit, so it remains at 100% exposed. We added a couple more folks to the Kansas City workshop. We're just about out of time, uh, time right now to add uh, new people. It's still possible. Uh, but you're going to have to hustle if you want to do that. Let me know. Uh, the lineup looks incredible for the re research weekend, and I would encourage you to consider the uh, distance learning option. Um, the uh, the quality of the papers is uh, really high this year. Here's a quick look at the uh, ETF, uh, the BMR uh, portfolios. Um, this is the ETF 13 
Uh, Two-thirds of them are on buy signals. Uh, what's on the sell signal are the uh, real estate treasuries, Australia, and Latin America. Uh, in ETF 32, uh, about three-quarters are on a buy signal with China, Japan, healthcare in charge. Um, and with the usual suspects still lagging, gold, utilities, real estate, treasuries, Australia, Latin America, Brazil, and uh, agriculture. Move it on. Uh, this is the S&P 500 uh, listing of the uh, of the top symbols. Uh, Netflix uh, is still powering right along. Now, uh, in tenth position, MYL Myelin uh, is red on the one week and one month, but it's still green on three and six months. So there may be a pullback in a, a relative strength leader that's available there. Same with per, uh, Perigo, P-R-G-O, and Kraft, K-R-F-T. Um, I like uh, Hasbro here in 15th position. Uh, it's uh, white, excuse me. Uh, it is uh, white on both the um, uh, one week and one month and green on the three and six months, so that's favorable. Uh, we're gonna, I want to shift. Uh, there was a uh, issue with stock charts this weekend. They were updating the database, and so uh, I am providing an alternate look at the uh, uh, market health check here. Uh, and so a couple things I just want to draw your attention to. I'm using the RLCO framework here, and uh, let me get this set up for you. There we go. So the inset frame that I'm uh, doing the highlight, that's the daily chart. We'll zoom in on that in a second. Uh, what I want you to notice on the, um, uh, this is about a, uh, almost a three-year chart on the weeklies with SPY. And I want you just to notice the, uh, the strength of that 270 regression line. That's that thick uh, purplish line. And how throughout this bull, uh, it has held all with the exception of this one uh, minus two Z-score uh, uh aberration, which when it corrected, I want you to notice why that was such a good trade. That's the Z pattern um, uh, in support of a uh, weekly pullback. Uh, in every other case, the Z minus one held or the pullbacks only got to the Bollinger Band mean, the red line on the weekly basis. And so that becomes a, uh, an important way to identify potential buy on dip opportunities uh, using weekly charts and this RLCO framework. And uh, the other thing you'll notice is that um, the slope of that 270 has hardly uh, deviated at all, despite the you know the daily and the weekly noise in here. That this uh, that the slope of that once the uh, trade started to develop in 2012. At the end of 2012, we've had nothing but uh, solid moves up, except for again this one, this one pullback. Now, uh, when we come in and, and zoom in and look at the weekly, uh, just one moment, let me get that zoomed in, in order to get a sense of where we are right now. Let me let that come up on your screen. Uh, what you're going to notice is that the uh, the uh, the price action of the last three or four weeks is is still very favorable for the upside. And what we've got, well, it's just not the zoom in is not on your screen yet. Let me give it a second. There we go. 
So uh, if we look at this uh, swing high over here at about 213, um, we've had a uh, then we had a sell off, a test, a pullback, a test, a pullback, a test. We've got this rising triangle being driven by the 270 regression line. So I want you to notice the, uh, the 270 is this pink line or purple line, and it's been forming this, uh, this rising triangle or rising wedge. And so uh, we are now really uh, knocking hard on the door here at uh, 213. And so uh, if the, the last time that it did this uh, was back here, and what we got was about a 10-point move, uh, when it finally broke out above the previous swing high. Um, and so uh, we're at 213 now. This one, to me, sets a potential for a move up to about 224, just on a technical basis. If we can get a bounce here, uh, off it goes to 224. So very favorable uh, price action here on a weekly basis. And if we scroll down now and look at the... Uh, Look at the uh, at the daily charts. We're going to see the same thing. Let me let that come up on your screen. There we go. On the daily chart, you'll notice that the daily 270 uh, has really been a great source of support all the way through here as well. Uh, and it's been moving basically between the 90 and the 270 uh, in this channel here all the way up, uh, continuing to grind out new highs. So the, the 90 is this green line. Um, so this is symptomatic of a, uh, of a bear that's, or I mean of a bull that is continuing to find its strength. Uh, and now we've had three days in a row of upward movement. And now we're back over here ready to test this previous high at about 213. Let me try to draw that a little better for you. So testing this high here. And again, uh, we, we're poised right on the edge of it on Friday. And, and if we go, then the next, the next move is up here to about 224. Um, all other things being equal. The support continues to be right here around uh, fair value at 208. Uh, if that fails, you know, we're looking at um, Z minus 1 around 203, Z minus 2 about 201, three standard deviations about 197. Uh, so that's what, the, that's what the price ladder looks like. Um, uh, this is a very healthy uh, bull that's marching along here two steps forward and one step back. Uh, and so I have a positive outlook on the market going ahead. All right, next up is the uh, ETF2 regional report. Again, let me let that come up on your screen. And we have uh, nine out of the 10 indexes are on a buy signal. Only ILF is on a cash. And so that moves us from 100% invested to 90% invested and 10% cash uh, based on the um, index signals. We're in bull quiet conditions as a reminder. Uh, EFA at 48 is better than the S&P at 44 on the strength. So right now the globals are favored. Inside the U.S., the strength remains technology, mid-caps, small-caps, with uh, large-caps pulling up the rear. 
Um, the strongest two sectors are Japan at 52 and uh, EFA, the globals, at uh, 48. And then the two weakest sectors, Latin America and Asia less Japan. Um, Asia less Japan has uh, replaced the S&P as the other weak, the other weak sister. So we're actually starting to see a little bit of recovery back in the U.S. large caps once more. They've been lagging for about three months. Inside the U.S. sector, spiders. Uh, it's healthcare and discretionary are the clear winners at 48 and 47, with my favorite being healthcare, the XLV. Has been very consistent, very strong. Uh, next up is the market health check. <clears throat> let me let that come up on your screen. There we go. Uh, so now all of the U.S. is above average in the white. Uh, so that's favorable for the U.S. Um, the strength leaders are private equity, Japan, China, Hong Kong. Uh, we have all of Europe above average, all the countries in Europe above, above average, with the exception of Spain. Canada and Mexico slightly below average. Philippines, Indonesia, India, uh, Malaysia, Australia just below average. Um, still uh, significant weakness in Latin America and Brazil. Uh, silver is starting to pull away from gold a little bit, is now above average. Uh, real estate bonds and uh, treasuries still lagging in the yellow. Commodities still getting punished, uh, basically driven by uh, the pullback in oil. Uh, but, you know, oil has started its, its little rebound back from the edge of disaster, which uh, will account for some of the strength we've been seeing in Russia as well. I want to shift quickly to the daily report so we can look at some uh, look at some symbols. <clears throat> Waiting for that to come up on your screen. Slow connection tonight. There we go. All right, so uh, what we have, uh, we have uh, no signals in the overreaction and channeling on the big indexes. We do have a channeling signal in Merck. We have five DDs in agriculture and Cisco, so we'll look at those two symbols. Uh, triple screen in oil, 551W in Home Depot, and then a significant number of... Uh, Symbols that test out well on the auto framer. These are all things that are better than two to one on their um, uh, uh, trade location, if you will. You can see how the volatility has rolled over. This is ATR percentage compared to the last 100 days. You can see it's down, just tipped into the quiet going below the red line. So uh, that's very healthy for the upside uh, trade. Um, this is the, uh, the tactical summary. Again, a handful of dojis. We have one channeling here. That's Merck. It's in number four position on the max pain range compression. It was a percent loser on Friday, losing 1.2%. It's got nine, a score of nine on RSI2, so um, that's actually a pretty favorable set of uh, pullback conditions. Um, here's the 5DD in Cisco which is froggy at 3.1 and also has a 9 on the RSI2, so that looks favorable. Uh, DuPont, Walmart, and Chevron all are really attractive just on, on the auto framer and the max pain range compression basis. 
Um, so we're definitely going to want to look at those in PRC for uh, DuPont, uh, Walmart, and Chevron. Shift into the ETFs next. Let me let that come up on your screen. While we're waiting for that screen to come up, I would uh, strongly urge you to take a look at Monica Milbrat's uh, swing trade challenge. She took the 30 trades in 30 days swing trade challenge. She took, um, uh, she made her notes on her daily trading plan, planned and prepared them each day, uh, took the trades according to the rules, um, documented her trade decisions in a trade log uh, and a case study on each uh, on each trade, marked up each of the screenshots for those trades, and then after every five trades, she put the numbers and the results into our little results spreadsheet and did some moving analysis about the trades uh, and the learning points she was making. She did the daily after action review where she looked at things to sustain and improve and to commit to action on in the planning, preparing, and execution phase. And, uh, and I think she did a model uh, exercise. What she did was just exactly right. And it doesn't surprise me that she came out of there with a dozen important insights about how to tighten up her uh, trading. And she came in at about plus 14R uh, on the, uh, the net of those 30 trades. And so uh, I think that's been uh, a pretty impressive piece of work by Monica. And, and I would tell you, when I do coaching uh, with folks, uh, that's exactly what I have them do, and that's the, that's the work that we do. And uh, you can see the results in the confidence that she has and her mastery of the symbols and figuring out how to adapt the strategies and systems to her own circumstances. That's how you do the work. I don't know of any other shortcut. I don't know of any other way around doing that work on a daily basis to be professional. So um, I would commend uh, your attention uh, to the work that she did, and, um, and I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, so inside the ETFs, there's uh, the VIX is um, number one in the max pain range compression, has a 7.2 to 1 reward to risk ratio. Um, you can see a triple screen in 551W in oil, which is number five on the MPRC, and 2.5 to 1. There's a 5DD in agriculture. The big percent winner uh, on uh, Friday was uh, emerging markets coming in at really at 0.3%, and then a handful of uh, dojis. Uh, here's a quick look at the auto framer and the regression line fractal framework uh, for you to look at. And you can see there's uh, quite a lot of uh, symbols to choose from. What I want to do is uh, just do a quick, uh, a quick demo of the, um, of the spreadsheet that I just got done uploading for you in the chat room. Uh, let me get that rascal opened here. <clears throat> Waiting for that screen to pop up. Okay, so uh, this is the spreadsheet. What I want you to notice, uh, it's a, it looks similar to that uh, to the daily, the Dow and the ETF tactical. I've simplified it to a certain extent uh, to allow a lot more symbols to be put in and to remove some of the things um, that I don't cover in the swing trade workshop that are really geared more towards the, um, uh, the intraday trade, things like the frog stat and the gap stat and some of that. But I think this... Uh, allows you to focus on the swing trade patterns um, pretty nicely. Um, the first thing to notice is that all of the columns 
have these little pull down buttons and what those let you do is sort the entire database with a, just a couple keystrokes so what I'm going to do right now is come over and show you um, let me start on the left hand side <clears throat> and in this area over here you notice it says index one two three four five and the names um, the indexes refer to this column down here the index number each one of these symbols uh, belongs to one of these uh, symbol portfolios. So index 1 is all the Dow 30 symbols. Index 2 is the ETF 32 and so forth. Uh, so if I wanted to concentrate just on the Dow 30 symbols, uh, what I could do is come down, select the pull down menu in index, and uh, select just the number 1, and then what I would have uh, so let me clear some of these other, sorry. Uh, I would have all 30 symbols of the Dow um, uh, noted here. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and sorted it by uh, reward to risk ratio. And you can see once that, once that screen comes up, you'll see that uh, 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 any swing system that a signal has fired, uh, you'll see uh, noted in the um, in the chart. Uh, so we've got a channeling and a 5DD in Cisco. Uh, if I wanted to uh, to expand this to all of the symbols in the uh, in all of the indexes, I would come down and select all, uh, and then. Uh, resort by reward to risk ratio, for instance. And now I've got all 900 symbols um, sorted by reward to risk ratio. Now in this yellow box where, that I'm highlighting now, um, you, you can enter your own criteria for the minimum reward to risk ratio you want to see highlighted. I happen to have two. Uh, so anything that is uh, reward to risk ratio of two or better uh, is going to highlight in that column um, green with white text. Now what I do on this one uh, to keep it simple is I'm using a somewhat more simplified calculation than I do on my uh, full up uh, uh, auto framer and my uh, daily tactical on the daily charts. All I've done is instead of looking at a mechanical entry I've just said let me take the closing price as the current trade location. Let me find the 10-day high as my reasonable upper uh, profit target. And so the reward for that trade is going to be the 10-day high minus the price. And I'm going to divide that by the ATR multiple. In this case, I've chosen 1 to be the multiple. So it's simply 10-day high minus the price divided by the ATR is what computes this reward to risk ratio. And for purposes of qualifying trades uh, on the basis of reward to risk, that seems to me to be uh, simple yet comprehensive and, uh, and logical compared to how um, these systems uh, trade uh, in the swing trade time frame. Uh, so what I'm saying there is there, there may be a slight difference in the reward to risk ratio on this spreadsheet and the ones that I send around on my dailies. But... Uh, I want you to see why that choice was made. Now, uh, what this spreadsheet will also do is if, for instance, you wanted to focus just on channeling, you could come over to the channeling signal column and uh, sort that from largest. Well, actually, let me put this. Go down to the, uh, to the filters, unselect them all, and then only select the largest number. So in this case, select the number two. And that means both of the rules of channeling fired. And now what I can show you here, sorted by reward to risk ratio, is that out of those 900 symbols that are in the Dow 30, the ETF 32, the ETF 200, my personal favorites, and the S&P 500, uh, these are all the symbols that fire on the channeling. You'll notice that uh, four of them also fire on five days down, like um, uh, Allegron, Reynolds American, PowerShares Emerging Markets, and uh, Mylan NV. 
And you can also see that most of them test out pretty well on the reward to risk ratio. So the, the trade-off decision you always have to make as a swing trader or as a trader, especially when you're learning new systems, is to decide, uh, should I concentrate on a single system and expand the population of symbols to consider? Or should I narrow the list of symbols and then try to get multiple systems uh, to see which ones work? I actually recommend uh, going with the, uh, I'd rather see you start with one system and then use a lot of symbols until you get a feel for how that thing works, when it fires, when it doesn't fire, uh, what the characteristics of the trade are like, and then branch out from there. I think what you end up coming to, though, is uh, as you start adding new systems, uh, you can afford to start reducing the number of symbols that you consider so you can start developing some proficiency or specialization there uh, and come up with some middle ground between number of symbols and number of systems. Really, what you want is a combination of systems and portfolio size uh, that will allow you to generate enough signals on a routine basis to get all of your capital comfortably um, into the market under the right conditions. So, um, you know, it's almost, it's almost more of a pain to have too many signals. If it turns out in this case that you had too many signals, this is where you might start working your way down from the top using the reward to risk uh, ratio, for example. The final thing that I will notice, I'll have you notice, is that uh, I'm going to select all. And now you'll notice that uh, there are a number of uh, symbols at the top of the stack uh, that test out well on the auto framer or the reward to risk ratio, but do not have um, any, any uh, particular swing trade pattern. In this case, it's the top six symbols. So Base Metals, Southwest Airlines, Urban Outfitters, American Airlines Group, uh, the yen and copper all test out better than four and a half to one, but none of them have a particular swing trade pattern. And so one of the things that may occur to you, like it has occurred to me, is that you may end up getting a favorable um, trade location without a particular signal to fire. You may be able to find yourself uh, able to trade that frame um, on a one day at a time basis. So uh, you'll hear, you can hear more of that uh, uh, described in the, um, uh, the Swing Trade Home Study course and then some of our written material. So uh, I just wanted to show you how, how this rascal works. And then I'll finally just come down and show you the, all these uh, symbols here in the yellow uh, for uh, index number four. This is the place where I put all my, uh, I'm, all my personal symbols for right now. All I've done is uh, listed CLF, CLF, uh, as that symbol. And all you have to do is go to the yellow section, uh, change the symbol, change the name, and then the spreadsheet will do the rest to compute all of the um, performance numbers. Um, Martin, yeah, RSI2. Uh, yeah, RSI2 is similar to the... Um, uh, to the reward to risk ratio in the sense that uh, uh, it is not directly associated with any rule set, but it's just one of those things we've learned along the way that uh, uh, an RSI 2 value of under 10, and especially an RSI 2 value under 5, uh, turns out to be a, a pretty good warning or, or early alert to a potential large move um, because of, it takes about like two days of really harsh selling uh, that closes poorly to generate an RSI 2 value of that low. So um, from extreme conditions come extreme results. And so that's uh, we've just learned that the RSI 2 is something that uh, uh, we ought to be paying attention to. Okay. So that's what that uh, simplified swing trade system spreadsheet looks like. All of the rules that are used to compute uh, the, uh, the signals are located over on the right-hand side of the spreadsheet. It's hidden off the screen, uh, but they're over there uh, to include the uh, uh, computation of reward to risk. Uh, so uh, that spreadsheet is now up in the, uh, in the chat room for you to consider. Um, 
I, uh, my throat's getting a little scratchy right now, so, uh, uh, well, let's see. Let's try, uh, I think I can, I can hang on for a couple more uh, symbols. Let's go to the, uh, uh, take a quick look at some symbols of interest. And uh, before we call it a night, so... All right, the first one we want to look at is Merck. Um, these are going to be all on daily charts. So I'm going to let that come up on your screen. There we go. So again, sorry for the delay. So what we have at Merck here is uh, finding a, looking to see if it's going to find support here just outside the river. There was a lot of volume traded at this price level. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the two-hour chart. Silly me. Let me fix that. All right, on a daily basis, let me let that come up on your screen. Hold on a second. Sorry. Okay, so on a daily basis, on the daily chart, uh, what we have is a pullback right to the 270 RL and the Bollinger Band 30. So it's pulled back right to where it's supposed to. Uh, it had a Z plus two and a half move up here. It's been Z plus three in a couple spots and now has rolled over and come back to fair value and where it's creating a, a test of this of this double bottom. If we get support here, uh, then you can see it easily getting to 61 and then uh, and then 62 on a retest of the previous swing high. Failure here. Um, you'll see that it's now going to try to close this gap down here to about 58.50 or the RL90. Um, so this is actually tradable in both directions. My preference would be uh, to look for the long side trade on this only um, because healthcare has been so strong. Um, this looks like an aberration. There's a ton of support already over here um, at 57. Uh, and so uh, any t as long as it stays above 57, I'm looking for a 1, 2, 3 entry to re-enter. I would actually like to see some weakness in Merck so that I can buy it at a better price down here around uh, 57.5 or 58. This is the area I would, I would dearly love to be able to buy it in, uh, recognizing that its next move is uh, it can get back to 63. Uh, or 62 pretty easily. Um, so that's Merck. Let's look at the five day down in Cisco. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I like the Cisco trade. It's pulled back. It's had this orderly pullback also to the RL270. In this case, the RL270 is sloping up. 
uh, and so that's still long-term favorable on the upside with strength in the um, in technology. The river is up, the 90 is up, the 270 is up. It's pulled back in an orderly fashion from Z plus two. I'm ready to buy this on uh, five cents above um, Friday's high, so looking to enter around 29.50. Uh, a breakdown from this would we would see that getting to the bottom of the river, uh, 28.50. Uh, that would be surprising. A breakdown below 29.50 though, and uh, and it's going to come all the way back here to 27 and a quarter. Uh, so this looks like a long side preference, but um, it's re it really should hold at the Bollinger Band mean or higher. And if it breaks out below the river, then the positive move has cracked. You might be able to hear the Huskies in the background calling their daddy. Uh, we're going to look at a 551W in Home Depot. Um, I like this one. We've been swing trading this one. Um, the most recent swing trade, let me let that come up on your screen. All right, girls, in your cage. Come on. In your cage, in your cage. Hey, get your cage. Cage. Good girls. Uh, they were trying to tell me that it was raining outside. Okay, so here's the Home Depot trade frame. Um, what I want you to notice is that we had... Um, We've been swing trading this one here. We went long. That When that one failed, we ended up getting short, cashing it, then going long, uh, coming up, and we cashed this one last week. And now uh, uh, what, what's setting up nicely here is this pullback, which has found support around 112. And so this is a perfect 551W pattern, uh, which means that, the first five is that compared to five weeks ago, the price action is up. And then compared to five days ago, the price action is down. So there's the orderly pullback. And then Friday, the one is a, uh, a white candle day. So it was a, a closed higher than it opened. And there's still uh, a favorable room to go test the 10-day high. So we have a nice reward to risk ratio. So that is what the 551W pattern looks like in a nutshell. And uh, so the trade frame on this is to buy it at about 112.50 with the stop just below um, uh, Friday's low with the target of the 10-day high, in this case 116. I want you to notice that the, that the 270 regression line is still chugging away uh, northward. And that what we had is this, this sharp pullback from here uh, was really the anomaly, the one I'm highlighting right now. The, uh, and so what we've had since then is this move to get back to fair value, which is now about halfway back up the, that stack. So it's still uh, looking to get up to 118 and a half as fair value. And this, this gives us a really nice move to the upside. And the beauty of this is if it collapses below, I would say, 111, then you're justified in taking a trade that has a target uh, on the short side going back to 106. So we really do have a critical, uh, a critical, uh, critical uh, uh, state right here, critical state being there's a favorable trade to the upside and to the downside. And this is one I'm willing to take. Um, in either direction. All right, so we're coming up on just about an hour there. Uh, throat's getting a little scratchy, and um, uh, so I want to I'm going to cut it there. I also want to give you time to review the spreadsheets. Um, the uh, the 20 minute video is all, is not quite uh, uploaded at YouTube yet. It's a pretty big one because I had it on the best quality uh, possible. So I think in about it looks like in about two hours that spreadsheet will be up and so you'll have some time to be able to look at that um, but I would suggest you take a look at the uh, the spreadsheets in the chat room and um, and then when that video comes out you may want to spend some time 
with it so you can see how to noodle around. But if you've worked with my spreadsheets before, it'll come as no surprise to you how to work it. Um, so that's everything I wanted to cover tonight, uh, giving you a handful of uh, uh, trade frames for um, for Tuesday. And uh, and so I'm going to we'll call it a day there and um, and let you get back to uh, to your families and, uh, and your preparations. So if there's no, uh, no questions, um, that'll be it for tonight. You guys take good care um, and drive carefully on this weekend if you're traveling. Um, see, you, see you in the chat room. Cheers. Thanks, Martin.